What's going on? It's Suk and I'm back with a brand new video on Super Duper Tech. And in today's video, I'll be bringing you my full and in-depth review of the brand new M3 powered 13 inch MacBook Air. We are on the road to 5,000 subscribers. So if you are new around here, then I must ask you to subscribe, clicking the bell icon to be notified of when a new video goes live. But without any further ado, let's hit the titles. So first things first, let's get into talking about the design of this brand new MacBook Air. So it indeed follows the exact same design and form factor that we've seen with the previous M2 MacBook Airs, which had a complete redesign over the other MacBook Air models. So you'll find that this design is going to stick around for quite some time. And like pretty much every other Apple product, it's made using aluminium and glass and feels very premium and well built. And speaking from a structural point of view, I've noticed minimal flex to the chassis, both on the keyboard deck and the exterior frame. Like we've seen with the M2 MacBook Air models, the M3 models are available in four different colors, space gray, silver, along with starlight and midnight. And with the midnight color, you'll find there is a new coating to reduce the amount of fingerprints left on the Mac. There is also two different areas in which you'll find that the MacBook Air slightly differs to the MacBook Pro models. So firstly, you'll notice that the keyboard deck is the same color matched to the entire chassis of the MacBook Air, whereas with the MacBook Pro models, the keyboard deck is blacked out. And you'll also notice that there is no speaker grill on the MacBook Air as the speakers fire from under the display aimed directly towards the listener. Whereas the MacBook Pro has speaker grills and fires the audio straight up to fill the surrounding area with sound. The only branding we see with the MacBook Air is the polished Apple logo on the lid and there is no embossed MacBook Air text on the bottom of this MacBook Air like we see with the other MacBook Pro models. The displays on the MacBook Air lineup haven't really had any changes over the past few years. Of course, when we had the redesign with the M2 13-inch MacBook Air, the vertical pixel count increased by 64 pixels to include the menu bar and notch space at the top of the display. Display. But other than that, we still have the same pixel density. It still supports the P3 color gamut. It gets up to 500 nits of brightness, which sure is not exactly the highest. And yeah, it's an LCD display as opposed to an OLED or a micro LED. So as you can see, blacks are not true black. They're kind of grayed out. But at the end of the day, if you're looking to use this MacBook Air for content consumption, you're really not going to have much, if any, issues. It has a resolution of 2560 by 1664 and pair that with a diagonal screen size of 13.6 inches, it has a pixel density of 224 pixels per inch. And as we've seen for the past few years, it still supports Apple's True Tone technology and is able to view colors from within the P3 color spectrum. If you were hoping to see ProMotion technology on the MacBook Air, then I'm sorry to disappoint. That technology has been reserved specifically for the MacBook Pro models exclusively. I said the same thing last year with the M2 MacBook Air models, and I'm going to say the same thing again. I would love to see mini LED technology make its way over to the MacBook Airs. Sure, we probably won't see it for a handful of years, but I'm hopeful to see at least that technology make its way across to the MacBook Air models. As due to the increased portability and the lightweight nature of the MacBook Airs, I love traveling around with it, but the fact that the screen cannot get as bright as the MacBook Pro models really leaves much to be desired. And let's be real, what could they really change about the display? Yes, they could give us Face ID, but we're not going to get that before the MacBook Pro models. Sure, they could increase the resolution, but are they really going to increase the resolution on the 13-inch MacBook Air higher than the 14-inch MacBook Pro? Let's be real, they're not going to do that. Maybe they could bring across that ProMotion technology and increase the refresh rate of the displays. Who knows? But I think the most logical thing is to perhaps bring across that mini LED technology or at least do something to increase the display's brightness. As I believe the next step for the MacBook Pro models is to incorporate OLED technology. So it would make sense for those MacBook Air models to receive the mini LED technology as a hand-me-down. 
So I have a bit of a bone to pick with Apple with this particular decision. The entry MacBook Air models do not come with a power adapter which will enable fast charging on this MacBook Air. Because as standard with the MacBook Air models, you get a 30 watt USB-C power adapter included in the box. And the only way you're able to fast charge this MacBook Air is by using a 70 watt USB-C power adapter. Personally, I think this should have been included in the box as there are going to be many, many people that will be purchasing these MacBook Airs from retailers like Argos, Amazon, Curry's, even Apple directly themselves through their retail stores and taking this MacBook home, plugging it into charge and they'll be sat there thinking why on earth this MacBook takes so long to charge. And sure, if you purchase through Apple and go through the configurator, they'll charge you an additional $20 to include it in the box. But that's not the point. It should have been included in the box. The MagSafe 3 charger cable comes color matched and braided to your MacBook Air, which is something we've seen previously. And I still love the fact that the power adapter and the cable come completely separate. So if the cable was to get damaged, you're able to purchase the cable separately as opposed to buying a new power adapter as well. So the port situation on the M3 MacBook Air models is basically the same as the previous M2 models, which is to say that on the left side of the device, you'll find your MagSafe 3 charger port along with two USB-C Thunderbolt 4 ports. And on the right side, you'll find a single 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. So last year with the M2 MacBook Air models, I commented on the fact that you were only able to output up to one external display, which was a little disappointing. Now this time around, you are able to output up to two external displays, but there's a little caveat to that. You will need to close the internal MacBook Air's display itself, which I have to admit is a little disappointing as there are other devices out there which cost a fraction of the price that this MacBook Air costs and allow you to output up to two external displays with keeping the internal display open and active. So talking about the displays, I'll be remiss if I did not speak about the notch. It houses a full HD FaceTime HD webcam, which from a video standpoint, I don't really see much if any of an improvement compared to the M2 MacBook Air. But what Apple has done this time around with the M3 MacBook Airs is allowed us to isolate our voice from the surrounding environments with these new microphones in this MacBook Air, which I'm sure like myself, you'll be able to find appreciation for this. So take a little listen to the microphones on this MacBook Air. And of course the video footage you'll watch has been shot using that full HD webcam in the MacBook Air. So the video footage you are now watching is being captured from the 13 inch M3 MacBook Air. So you should get a good feel for how the image signaling processor within the M3 chip is handling all of this data, be it, you know, handling my skin, skin tones, the exposure, sharpness, white levels, all of that kind of stuff, you should get a good feel for how this webcam is going to handle it. Once again, it is full HD webcam footage, so it's 1920 by 1080p. Now, the one thing that comes with these new MacBook Air models is some new microphone technology. Now, what, what I mean by this is first and foremost, any background noise, you're able to cancel this noise out. Now, I'm gonna give you a quick demonstration on how this looks. So, I'm just gonna play some background noise here from YouTube. Now, you might be able to tell my voice, you might not, you know, it, it's going to be picking up all of this noise. But if I go into voice isolation, you can clearly tell that it's done a very good job at masking out and hiding that background noise and picking up and enhancing just my voice. Quite good to be really honest with you. You can tell that there is a bit of digital processing, but in the grand scheme of things, if you are working in a coffee shop, that someone you, know, you need to take a phone call, or even if you're in a you know a Zoom call, FaceTime, anything like that, and you know there is a, a noisy environment, you might be traveling, you might be in an airport. At least now people are able to clearly hear your voice and not the background noise. Once again, that's how it sounds. And once again, this is what it sounds like with voice isolation on. It's quite good to be honest with you. It's quite good. I've said this before, and I've heard many reviewers talk about this at length. Trackpads on MacBooks are probably the strongest part other than the Apple Silicon, which I'll get to in just a minute. Probably the strongest part about these MacBooks. They're responsive, they're accurate, and the gestures just make sense. And it's not like other Windows machines where you attempt to go for a gesture and you have to do it maybe three times in order for it to actually pick it up properly. As I said, they're probably the most strongest part about these MacBooks. And you'll find no complaints here. Above the trackpad, you'll find the keyboard. 
You've also got Touch ID in the top right corner of the keyboard. So if you need to log into any third party websites or log back into your Mac and even make payments using Apple Pay just by placing your finger on the power button. There's one quality that MacBooks are pretty much universally known for and that's their audio. Take a little listen to the speakers on this MacBook Air. Perhaps the biggest change to this particular MacBook Air is the silicon that runs it. So the M3 chip in this MacBook Air has had some sizable improvements across some categories, notably the GPU. But that's not to say that there aren't any improvements when looking at the CPU. When running benchmarking test Geekbench 6 on the M2 MacBook Air, I got a single core score of 2,569, whereas on the M3 MacBook Air, I got a higher score of 3,088, which is approximately an 18% improvement. Things look very similar on the multi-core side of things, with the M2 MacBook Air scoring 9,882, whereas the M3 MacBook Air scored 12,088, which is around a 20% improvement. When running the 3D Mark Wildlife Extreme benchmarking test on the M2 MacBook Air, I got an average frame rate of 34 frames per second. Whereas with the M3 MacBook Air, we see around a 20% improvement with it averaging 41.8 frames per second. Where I saw some of the biggest improvements was when it comes to exporting the classroom scene through Blender using the GPU. As with the M2 MacBook Air, it took 4 minutes and 43 seconds to export, whereas it took 3 minutes and 7 seconds using the M3 MacBook Air, which was around a 40% improvement. So there are some clear improvements on the M3 MacBook Air over the M2 model, especially if your workflow includes any 3D modeling. But to be honest with you, if that's the case, then you certainly should be looking towards the MacBook Pro models, especially those that come with more than eight gigabytes of unified memory. As there were instances where that eight gigabytes of unified memory certainly caused issues. As with the latest version of Blender, using this M3 MacBook Air, I was simply unable to render the classroom scene using the GPU using the latest version of Blender. So I've already uploaded a video in which I ran a number of different tests on this MacBook Air. So if you'd like to see what it was like when I ran Lightroom, Logic Pro, Final Cut Pro, or a handful of other benchmarking tests, then be sure to click the card in the top right corner or check the video description for links to that video. Gaming on this MacBook Air is also something that is quite possible, albeit you will need to find a number of games that are natively available for macOS or that are optimized for Apple Silicon. Sure, you can play games through crossover, but the hindrances being the 8GB of unified memory along with the 8-core GPU really do limit you when it comes to playing games on this system. And if you want to see what it was like to play a handful of games on this MacBook Air, then be sure to click the card in the top right corner, or once again, I'll leave that link down below in this video's description. The battery life on the M3 MacBook Air is still quite good. Comparing it to the M2 MacBook Air, on average, I get around 40 minutes more battery life on this MacBook Air as opposed to the previous M2 model, which means I can go multiple days without needing to charge this MacBook Air, especially if I'm doing light tasks. But of course, as soon as you start to push this MacBook Air to its absolute limit, then you can drain this machine in under four hours. So now that we've covered the hardware elements of the MacBook Air, let's get into talking about the software, macOS Sonoma. So I'll start with this. Of course, I have been using macOS Sonoma for some time across all of my Mac hardware. And I still use the previously implemented features like universal control to be able to control other MacBooks using the keyboard and trackpad from a completely different Mac. I thoroughly enjoy using Spotlight Search as once again, I have over 90 terabytes worth of storage and it makes finding those files a much easier task. 
I love that we have these new screensavers in macOS Sonoma. They're pretty much ripped directly from the Apple TV, but I'll be straight with you, they look really good. I still use a number of different widgets on my desktop, be it Find My Friends, the Home Applications widgets, or the Weather, Clock, Notes, and Calendar. I found that those widgets have become quite helpful in my day-to-day -day routine. There are some widgets like the YouTube widget which make pretty much no sense to have as it then forces you to open up the application on your iPhone. And whilst I have been using the React With Your Hands video feature which is enabled through pretty much any video conferencing application, at times it can be quite annoying especially if you're just speaking to someone and it thinks that you've got a thumbs up and out of nowhere you've got a thumbs up at the side of your head. Now this is one of the things that you pretty Pretty much will never really realize that it's working but game mode game mode has been quite great as it's meant that when i am playing games on this mac that it's able to give performance priority to the game as opposed to any other background tasks and overall i've not really had any issues with mac os and that's across the board whether i'm picking up one of my m1 pro macbook pros or if i'm using one of the m3 max macbook pros on the go honestly it doesn't matter which device i've been using mac os in the way that i've been using it has been pretty stable so to conclude, the build quality is great, the screen it's okay, the battery life is also quite great, but I do wish it charged faster with the included power adapter. The port situation is also okay, and the trackpad is second to none and it's quite great. The keyboard is great, I like Touch ID, I wished we had Face ID, but who knows when the day will come that we'll see Face ID on a MacBook Air. The webcam is good, the microphone improvements have been good across the board and the speakers are also good. They're not quite as clear or as loud as a MacBook Pro, but they are quite good. The performance is also quite good. And in most cases, it's actually great, especially if you are looking to just browse the web, do a bit of content consumption, a bit of document and spreadsheet work. And of course, on the off chance that you need to push the machine, you are able to complete those heavier workloads much faster than you would have been able to only a few years prior. So who would I recommend this MacBook Air to? Well, if you've got a burning desire to spend over 1,000 pounds on a new laptop, then of course, as you can see, the MacBook Air is going to be a good buy. And as I mentioned, if you are looking to push the machine, whether that be with a little bit of gaming or some 3D work, then I would certainly suggest purchasing the higher tier model with 512 gigabytes of storage and 16 gigabytes of unified memory. As unless you're using a lot of cloud storage, that 256 gigabytes of storage is going to get eaten up very fast. And as I mentioned, the eight gigabytes of unified memory is simply not going to be enough, especially if you're looking to hold onto your MacBook for quite some time. And if you are a student, then I would certainly suggest purchasing through Apple over Amazon and other retailers, as of course you'll get your student discount. And then through the configurator on Apple's website, you'll also be able to include the fast charger in the box so you won't be sat waiting around for your MacBook Air to charge up. Of course, I'm not going to sit here behind a screen and tell you to spend your hard-earned money where you need to. I'm pretty sure you'll be able to figure out if this MacBook Air is a good fit for yourself. And if you're able to comfortably afford a machine like this, then honestly, you're not going to have issues for a very, very long time. So that'll be it for today's video. Of course, if you enjoyed the video, then be sure to smack that like button. And if you are new around here, then be sure to subscribe, clicking the bell icon to be notified when a new video goes live. If you've got any questions with anything you've seen in today's video, then be sure to leave them down below in the comment section, or alternatively, you can hit me up on Instagram and X. I'll leave them linked down below in this video's description. Once again, thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Take care, and have a good one.